Razer ripped off Logitech by copying the G502 shape when they first released the Basilisk. And now they're doing it again by copying the free spin scrolling not from the G502, but from Logitech's MX Master Series with their new Smart Reel. So is Razer making a gaming mouse that can help in productivity tasks, or are they copying the wrong features? Starting with the build of the Razer Basilisk V3 Pro, it has rubberized side grips on a solid body with no flex or creaking. The texture on the backside and main mouse buttons may look rough, but actually feel smooth yet a little grippy. The side buttons are all glossy and easy to reach, except for the DPI shift button, where I have to tilt the mouse or my grip to reach the button when in a claw grip. But if you palm the mouse, it is easily reachable. At the bottom of the mouse is where you can put in the charge plate for key charging sold separately, and start the dongle. There is a profile switch button and the power switch with the option for Bluetooth, which is a great productivity fallback, allowing you to connect to the mouse through Bluetooth if you happen to forget the dongle at home. Going back on top, the main mouse clicks have short travel, sharp clicky tactility, and a soft but not mushy bottom mount. There are two extra buttons underneath the scroll wheel and by default one to cycle DPI and the other to access the new feature, the hyper scroll tilt wheel. Yes, the Basilisk V3 Pro has ripped off the mag speed scroll from Logitech's MX Master series and have called it the Hyper Scroll Tilt Wheel because it still has tilt controls, unlike the MX Master which has a separate side scroll wheel instead. The scroll has a lighter and more tactile feeling scroll unlike the MX Master, however it activates a little too easily. And there is a larger delay on the clutch with the Basilisk V3 Pro. The racer also doesn't have any sensitivity options. But why put a free spinning scroll wheel on a gaming mouse other than rolling through weapons in CSGO while pressing G to throw them away for fun? For that, I would appreciate if you threw in a like and subscribe for more tech reviews, keeping both gaming and productivity in mind. Well, there aren't really any good reasons for smart infinite scrolling other than being able to flick scroll to the bottom of a long page without having to change modes, which is actually satisfying to do or easily spam a single key if you change the button in the Synapse software, which has a lot of issues, but I'll get into that in a bit. Let's start with what's actually good in the Synapse software. It's fairly easy to navigate and customize, allowing you to change the DPI button to something more like play and pause media or remap it to something like M for map in games, even change the sniper DPI shift button into the B button to change firing modes in most FPS games, leaving you with three extra buttons for other shortcuts like ping, emotes, or push to talk. The Razer Synapse software picks up games automatically, so you're able to create shortcuts per game but also won't complain if you put productivity apps like Word or DaVinci Resolve, or even a browser, allowing you to seamlessly switch from gaming to productivity shortcuts. But that's it for good things, now the bad. The automatic profile switching doesn't always work, and when it does, there's a 2-5 to five second delay before it switches over, making it annoying as sometimes I would move in and out of editing and into File Explorer and the back or shift shortcuts don't apply. And there are times where it will not return to the default layout automatically, or even realize that you've changed programs. While you can just hit the profile button at the bottom of the mouse to change profiles, this is where it created another issue, where it's hard to figure out which profile is in use as the LED on the bottom doesn't seem to change. I tried to go for about 5 profiles which became a mess, but I've settled into 3 profiles and one of them has to be taken up by the default slot. So in productivity, it is usable but with caveats. One of the nitpicks I do have but isn't a big issue is lighting, which gets stuck in the charging status when you charge it on the dock. Second nitpick, you can't create macros without downloading the macro module. Why this isn't in Razer Synapse when you install it, I don't know, and including ads, just why. But what about using the Basis V3 Pro in-game, software issues aside, the PTFE feet feel fast and hard, where you can prominently feel the surface that you are mousing over, giving great feedback. When comparing the Basis V3 Pro to lighter mice or mice with glass feet on the speed pad, the Basis both felt smoother and more responsive, even without the 4000Hz receiver and charging dock which I'll get back into. This is probably due to the motion sync of the sensor package, which syncs up the mouse updates to the intervals that your PC extracts information. The 116 gram weight is a non-issue, however the hump on the back does feel my palm a little too much when in claw grip, limiting downward movement a little, adding a little more stability due to the extra contact. Both the primary mouse buttons, which use optical switches, don't feel significantly more or less responsive than anything I've used so far. Also, using the extra buttons as shortcuts like I mentioned earlier is very convenient as you don't have to reach or search for keys on the keyboard. Going back to the 4000Hz receiver and charging dock, the mouse feels noticeably more responsive at 4000Hz, but only mostly in the desktop. This is because most games don't have support for polling above 1000Hz, creating massive stuttering. The only exception I've found is Overwatch, and apparently CSGO is supported but at 4000Hz it stutters badly on my PC. It's also a key charger and after a couple hours of gaming, I realize it doesn't even charge my phone and stops after a couple seconds. As for lower power devices like a pair of headphones, the slant prevents you from placing it in the charger without falling off. While it makes sense that the mouse no longer sends inputs while charging, I wish the buttons would work in a specific profile, allowing me to use it as a glorified media remote or something like that. 
So other than a convenient reminder to charge the mouse, it's not really worth the trouble trying to find fixes for, especially with a battery life of 90 hours without RGB at 1000 hertz polling. But if you do use it, I suggest using the cable included with the mouse instead of the dock as it is much more flexible, making it handy in a pinch. As when I intentionally let the mouse drain to 0%, it doesn't charge fast enough to sustain a gaming session when jumping on and off the charger. The Basis V3 Pro is a very versatile gaming mouse with some software issues, but can be customized to increase productivity if you're willing to spend the time creating the profile, making it a great mouse that does both gaming and productivity while leaning more on the gaming side with the potential of being upgradable in the future with a 4000 Hz receiver and charging dock. I would recommend that you just get a regular key charger so when using the mouse, you can charge your phone and vice versa. If you want a more work capable mouse that doesn't hinder gaming, check out this video, like the video since you're at the end, subscribe for more gaming but staying productive, tech reviews, and have a nice one. Basilisk is so hard to say, dude. Jeez.